Hello everyone. Welcome to Virtual Webinar Series. So, without wasting any time, let me just introduce our mentor for today. He is Vaibhav Kumar. So, let me just give you a brief introduction about him. So, he started his education with S SRM University from from 2016 batch and he completed his graduation in 2020. So, during his graduation period, he did his internship in Versitas Technology LLC. So he was software development engineer there for a six month period. And then he, after his graduation, he joined Cloud One and he is currently working there as a software development engineer as a full time in Chennai, Tamil Nadu. So, Vaibhav, I would like you to hand over the mic to you so that you can go ahead with it. Thank you for a good introduction. Hi, I'm Vaibhav. I'm, I'm a software engineer at Cloud One. So I would like to like, you know, start with a brief introduction of like, you know, machine learning and uh, neural networks, but, you know, before starting my introduction, I would like each and uh, like, you know, some introduction, uh, like, you know, from your side, like how much are you aware of, like, you know, computer science concepts and uh, neural networks, like, you know, you can like, you know, message me on the chat so that, you know, I can start my, uh, like, you know, let's say presentation based on your experience so like you know how should i start because it's like very important to first tell you that you know machine learning is a very like you know uh hot topic of like you know 21st century it's there like you know for like you know 30 years so i'll i'll just say, uh, say you have two minutes time to just you know reply me on chat so that you know i can start my presentation thank you for joining so yeah i i am getting some answers like you know machine learning is a subset of deep learning which is mimic uh, which mimics the brain operate operations yeah, okay i know basic python okay good i want to introduce myself okay cac graduate graduated done my main project on ml okay nice very nice so can i assume that you know all of you are uh, college students or you know maybe starting like you know your college journey from this year or like you know yeah, they're, they're mostly these people are from college itself, from second or third year. Oh, so, yeah. Can you see my screen? Yeah, it's visible. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I would assume that you know you don't know like you know nothing about machine learning for now. Just for my my like you know understanding and like you know I'll teach you how to like you know learn machine learning. It's not like you know a magic to learn. You you don't have to have a computer science degree. First of all, let me just clear that. Okay. All you need to know is to have good, good statistics, a little bit of knowledge of uh, linear algebra and like, you know, you can easily uh, get a job in machine learning if you work hard enough, like, and, and you have a good philosophical mind. So, uh, so what is machine learning first of all? See, the reason I didn't want it to like, you know, use my cloud, which I have made, uh, PPT, which I have made is to, and to make you make you know how to how you should approach a machine learning problem and i i'll by the end of the webinar i'll provide uh, provide this ppt with enough resources to get you started with machine learning so what generally people on the internet say like you know machine uh, learn machine learning deep learning from your universities yeah i did that online courses i'm still doing from youtube yeah you can do but it's not better and not advice from articles good one from memes i like that so we have a whole uh, post on LinkedIn, um, uh, sorry, medium that, that, you know, how that will tell you how you should approach a machine learning problem in order to learn machine learning problem. You should understand what is a machine first of all, and how it works. I think everyone who is doing a gra uh, graduation in engineering is interested in, uh, in machines. So, and the reason you are attending this webinar is because you are interested in, in some topics of computer science, which are taught to you but you know, not as a, as a subject, which you can, you know, define your jobs. So I would like to tell you that, you know, I'm working as a software engineer and my work really goes around machine learning. I use Keras a lot. Keras is a, Keras is a Python deep learning library, which I, which I use to make, you know, deep learning models. Let's say I want to create a artificial neural network. I can do that using this, these simple documentations, which are there. Let's say model class. What is a model? I'll define that model. Back to the question, what is machine learning? So, you know, if you think, like, um, let's say the biggest idea of machine learning I have for my, uh, for, for, for my daily application is my mobile and how it tracks my activities. I have uh, Google applications, which, which runs on my Android phone. Whenever I say, okay, Google, it automatically 
gives me something to share what is okay google let's say it's a assistant uh, using using machine learning deep learning uh, deep learning algorithms mathematics and some python, python programming lots of rigors of python programming and in testing because machine learning is all about testing how we define our test parameters how we let's say how we train our models how we uh, how we how we cross validate our uh, models let's say i have a, I, let's say i have a type of machine learning algorithm called unsupervised i'll open the wikipedia link because uh, I, on a daily average i open wikipedia to, to know if my approach for algorithm is right or wrong and then i you know i type it for go lang script any 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 script based on like specification currently i am working with c++ libraries which are like so in daily uh, life we deal with data what kind of data you know if grocery group grocery list, what 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 is the price of grocery what how much quantity you want and how much you actually buy right so let's say i would take example of your mother she instructed you go go to the market buy 2 2 kg onion 2 kg potatoes and 1 kg of maybe lemon or some rice you you prepare a list and based on that list you ask the ask the shopkeeper to hand over you the and the items which which you just said and there is a probability that you know and there will be some some mistakes in uh, the quantity maybe from your side or from the shopkeeper side maybe he is greedy but you are not you are you are not you are not careful enough to see what what's going on so the type of machine learning problem in which you know we have a certain uh, parameters of input and we get a certain output is is called supervised learning so what supervised learning is you have to prepare a data what kind of data i'll i'll be back to this but and then you know you have to choose an algorithm you have to fit a model so if you were listening before i i mentioned something or more in the library i'll i'll be back to this cross uh, choose a validation method depending on the nature of data choosing choosing a validation set that can be most important step test of the it is a bad model ஒரு <laughs> 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 Uh, supervised learning so what supervised learning is we are given a set of data to prepare to, to train on let's say i have to prepare the data using an excel excel file or some images and some indexing methods of database and then i choose a algorithm which are numerous in, in its own way and then we fit a model we define a model in machine learning in order to solve a problem based on some previous research done by scientists in computer sciences and then we cross validate the method cross validate is like you know what's the accuracy of the method and you know once the machine learning models is being used in the daily life application we we you know test and train it side by side and then we produce the output with updates on the apps so how can we use uh, supervised learning is we can do people's analytics on internet of things cyber security assets stock exchange marketing fintech yeah and healthcare so what people's analytics i would tell you is like you know it's the uh, i would take example of cambridge analytica and its help given to donald trump in the elections of um, usa for president president so all the social media accounts of people in some areas were you know targeted and they were observed how they are behaving and they were uh, the the data, the data scientists of the cambridge analytica you know take those analytics and you know start giving them recommendations of videos on on their social medias let's say instagram facebook so and then you know the psychology the psychology of a human mindset was you know manipulated in a way no one would have imagined and that's the reason you know donald trump got more votes he was a businessman i don't mean to target him but it it was a very good trick and he was he had some cases on that so moving on to internet of things what by internet of things i mean is 
your devices such as smart smart electricity your mobile phone your raspberry pi your arduino all comes under internet of things even smart cars uh, smart cars are a kind of you know internet of things asset management is in comes under supply chain management which is a which is heavily used by amazon flipkart mintra all the e-commerce websites stock exchange yeah we do have stock exchange and there you can actually predict how the value of the of a certain asset would fall or rise based on the previous data so i have been saying a data a lot so what, i'll show you what data in machine learning actually is data can be unprocessed fact value text sound picture that can be interpreted and analyzed data is most important part of data analytics machine learning artificial intelligence without data we can't train any model or use get any anything out of it so facebook acquire whatsapp by paying blah, 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 blah. so the fact about writing a machine learning model is to, to get knowledge from information and from that data the the flow chart here describes the workflow of a machine learning model how we train it so how would you actually prepare data for a machine learning model that depends i would say i believe if you can see it we have a very nice article by to uh, machine learning mystery i really use this part these articles really prepare my interviews for my daily stand-ups to have a kt session knowledge transfer session along with my team so there's a a really nice newsletter by Jansen Brownlee. So he's a PhD and he writes, you know, very, really good summaries of research papers published on machine learning, deep data science and deep learning. So first of all, we get a really very small chunk of data. Let's say I get, I want to take an uh, um, example of your house price, the houses you live, how it is determined that what, what, what is the worth of your house you are living in. I would say the number of rooms, the number of bathrooms, how, how much is the area per square feet of the room? How many, how many square feet are there in, in your, in your kitchen or in your bathroom and all those parameters. So we gather all that and we have a technique called feature engineering in machine learning. So what feature engineering is, you know, use some pre, pre existing algorithms to make some new features for, for your model. Let's say I want, I have some area, area of your room. I can I generate a, a parameter of your room? Yes, I can. I have to derive length and breadth of your room, the area of the area of the four walls. All these things can help me get the basic requirements to use use those variables in some other 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 mensuration formula. So that's the basic example of a feature engineering. What it, what what we can use in data science daily knowledge discovery in database we call it or KDD yeah so what as a machine learning engineer you don't have to just you know work on models you just don't have to uh, know what model to apply it's very easy to be honest I'm a very uh, I'm I have become very good in googling in the past uh, two years because daily I have to open five to ten tabs when I'm when I have my coffee just to you know decide what I have to say, what I have to approach, how would I write a notebook? We call prototypes on notebooks for our daily machine learning scripts. So a problem is defined first, whether it's a classification problem, a regression problem, or, or a clustering problem. So that's where classification and regression comes under supervised learning. And high order problems are mostly reinforcement learning, neural networks, etc. Clustering, yeah. We, we applied predictive modeling based on whatsoever data we can generate out of your psychology first of all we have to think a lot in machine learning as per brain's perspective you might have to uh, brainstorm yourself with psychology stuff you might have to think beyond your capabilities it's very easy you just have to try and you have to learn a lot you have to do a lot of courses you have to learn a lot of reading on social media so then after preparing your data you have to write your data let's say i choose to have i choose to have sk learn linear regression model so what linear regression basically is i'll tell you it's a type of supervised learning it's a type yeah. it's when you can predict a, con a continuous random value out of a given data set 
let's say this is x axis and y axis and this is how data is distributed and this is what separates two data data types let's say this is type class a and this is class b over this line so how would you say we train our machine learning model you have to you have to know various things first one is linear algebra and for linear algebra what i mean is basic matrix operations and area area of the planes vector analysis some some probability and you have this y is equals to binomial coefficient and uh, epsilon this is a weird machine learning equation but we have to deal with it every day and it's really very interesting to deal with them once you know linear algebra you can deal with them very easily y is the set of outputs you get when you when you train a model x is a set of inputs a, a matrix of inputs and b is hyperparameters you get let's say b not b1 till to bp or all some constants which you apply to generate a output and it's not limited to that it's, it can be limited to 3d 4d multi dimensional this is how a scattered machine learning problem looks like data set and data is scattered over a plane it gets complicated as we go a little more further we call them biased and variance problems what is bias and what is bi uh, variance is suppose i'm taking average as a parameter in my machine learning model so what is average it's the sum of entities divided by the number of entities so and it suppose it's giving me some set of correct values and some set of negative values which i which i then cross validate when i'm training the machine learning model so what oversimplifies our machine learning model is something what what we call a bias what bias is if let's say you are working in your company and the boss is you know favoring some someone from from other department and is not giving you attention it is it is some kind of biased behavior towards someone and not giving you respect simply it's the natural to draw silicon valley but you have to deal with it so what you do you do, you try to put a little variance you try to be nice to your boss you try to know his psychology of his actions so coming back to training our a simple machine learning model using sk learn is so what sk learn is sk learn is a api api which can provide you various machine learning implementation models let's say i just showed you this equation for machine learning a model called linear regression yeah this one this is a based on uh, geometrics of the vectors you can learn them i'll i'll provide all the links so you have various functions let's say fit intercept normalize and you have attributes so yeah. let's say i want to train a machine learning model the best shortest example i can give you right now is you have you have a uh, you have a input input parameters let's say these are your input input matrix these are your output i linear regression on them so let's say i would give you a linear regression model uh, model out of sklearn library sklearn.linear.model i think you are aware of object oriented programming so i would leave, leave that to you so once i decide i want to apply a linear regression model i would fit fit the model with input and output x is the input y is the output and then based on that it, the output is stored in this reg variable and then you can predict the score out of it what score let's say i want to try to, uh, to know how what how much accurate is my model so that you know if i get give a, a, a set of input what kind of output will i get so we have various functions defined in this library right so coming back to supervised learning i just told you what uh, what linear regression is so i'll i'll take one more type of problem let's say classification so we have a page called statistical classification let's say you know i would say you all be having mobile phones and they must be of different brand different specs different models maybe different uh dif difference in grams or maybe difference in in their features so how would you would differentiate your phones you would compare compare using features isn't it you would say how much how much is the uh, megapixels of cap camera it is having how, how much is the uh, speed of the processor it is using the ram the android version it is and the lte version maybe 5g or 4g or maybe 3g some people even don't have 3g phones so that's kind of a classification what we say we tend to classify everything using using our predefined set of analogies values i have 
So I have a, I have a data distribution over a plane, and the, the dot and the black ones represent a class A, and the white ones represent a class B. So we have a model known as SVM, supported vector machines. Support vector machine is a supervised machine learning model that uses classification algorithm for two class classification problem. After giving SVM the set of labeled train data for each category, we are able to categorize new text. So if you can see, there's a circles and triangles, and it is distributed in a two, two surface plane, x-axis and the y-axis, and they are located at you know their own coordinates, maybe x1, x1, y1, x2, y2, and all that. So we have a we have an algorithm in machine learning known as SVM, which has various parameters, various hyperparameters to train for. And so it generates a hyperplane like this. So this hyperplane is one which is, you know, differentiating the circle, circles from the triangles. And, you know, based on training, it may, you know, shift as per your train. For non-linear non data, maybe this one is more accurate. How would you, you know, make a hyperplane for this one? Any guesses? Leave on chat. I would say 10. So time's up. I would say I would generate a circle over here and a circle over the boundary, which would differentiate the data from, from the circles and the triangles over here. How would you separate it out? It's all part of a data argumentation. A circle over here would separate triangles from the circles. So out of this, what kind of what is the intuition behind this problem you can get? It's a kind of classification. It's classifying circles from the triangles. It's a two-class classification. We, we can say binary classification. SVM is, a, is an implementation on binary classification. And multi-class classification is what we, we can say when we have more than two class, classes to classify from. Let's say rectangles, triangles, and circles. I would there it would be three classes: rectangles, triangles, and circles. So that would be multi-class classification problem. And we have algorithms for that. And yeah. Since it is really much mentioned now, so what is imbalanced data set? I'll tell you. So let's say you have too many classes of yes, 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 you know, circles, too many circles, and you have very less uh, data for triangles. Let's say you have too many uh, parameters and circle uh, for circles, and so many, so less parameters for triangles. How would you do uh, judge it? It's a kind of imbalanced data set, which would create some bias towards triangles or towards circles. So we have techniques in machine learning, which would distribute the data in such a way that it, it won't lead to high bias and high variance. Remember I told you, it's, it's really not easy to, to learn machine learning in this one day. So I'm trying to tell you how you should learn, how you should approach a problem. And later on, I'll give you, by the end of this tutorial, I'll give you everything you can uh, learn from on a PPT slide. I'll share it with the admin so that he can share it with you. So yeah, coming back to imbalance, we have techniques to balance the data set. And based on that only, we can generate a good output and a good accuracy. See, Keras, you know, Keras. So coming to multi-class classification problem. A classification task with more than two classes classify image of uh, images of fruit which which may be oranges, apples, or peas. Three class classification, isn't it? Oranges, apples, and peas, just like our rectangles, triangles, and circles. So that's a kind of classification problem we have in machine learning. So what regression and what is the diff difference between a regression and a classification? Basically, so it's basically regression is giving you continuous values. Let's say the prices of your stock, different stocks. Let's say price of a Bitcoin. You can have certain parameters for it. Let's say the famous one is Elon Musk is, uh, is disturbing the value of Bitcoin. You know, so I think all of you might have heard about it or read about something on Twitter. So you know, this guy literally got uh, challenged by you know the anonymous. I'll, I'll give you that. So what? What psychology it like you know happened behind the, the the decline in the price of Bitcoin? It was just one tweet. It was uh, Tesla will not be taking Bitcoins since it's not stable currency. And then majorly most of the Bitcoin holders start selling their Bitcoins, which were which were at peak that time. Everyone everyone who know who didn't know who were buying Bitcoins 
out of their savings. They were investing on Bitcoins. And then suddenly there was a decline just because of this guy, Elon Musk, the co-founder of Tesla, SpaceX, and whatsoever, sociopath, whatsoever you can call them. There are literally many tweets and memes on it. So coming back to uh, regression problem, regression problem gives you a continuous uh, targets, the continuous values which can happen. Let's say, so there are many like thousands of data sets available on machine learning which you can uh, look for so let's say you have cancelled in a regression okay yeah real estate price prediction this one is this one should be easy yeah. so so let's say you know this these are the indexes number hashtag number so this is x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 8 by 8 columns are there right so i can yeah yeah, so I can show you. So you see, this is a uh, selection for like what what values do you want to see on Kaggle? Let's say X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6 are your features for a model. You can train to, to have a machine learning model. X, X0 to Xn. Let's say you have just six features out of which you want to predict the house price per unit of area and you have continuous values 37 42 47 54 43 32 40 46 18 22 41 etc right so what can you think about them these are random values these are random values no these are values which are generated when you apply certain algorithm on of machine learning which will try to get you the output yeah so you see you have six features latitude longitude number of number of corners maybe distance from the sea yeah certain parameters which all these real estate uh, people decide and based on that the price value is decided by the company corporate whatsoever uh, government is deciding that but it's a data set which you can use to train your first model maybe so this was an example of a classical linear regression model i would say you can train a model on this data set and it's completely free. You don't have to pay anything any for any course. And yeah, so there are uh, various type of, see, vehicle data set from cardepo.com. Yeah, this one should be interesting. It's also on Kaggle. So here we have yeah, name, year, selling price, kilometers, fuel, seller, seller type, transaction, owners. And yeah, you have to actually decide what, what, what do you want to get out of it? So you can say, the selling price is the is the y of this machine learning problem y means the output and this name year kilometers driven fuel seller type trans transmission owner can be the x parameters of the machine learning problem of the data set so by using machine learning problems i can determine the selling price of this car of a certain car let's say my honda i10 I can determine a price, uh, the selling price of based on the number of years I have purchased before the fuel, the seller type, it's a Hyundai and a transmission. Let's say how much transmission power, how, how much is the horsepower, etc. and owner. So you see, there are some information about like what, what should not be a part of my model. Let's say they won't affect any model. Let's say if I'm, my name is Ahab and if your name is Uncle, I suppose. It won't harm any any more any price, right? So we we have a independence of choosing what feature we want to choose. So I would say I would not like to see, uh, use name. I would not not use the seller type. And based on these parameters, I want to take up uh, take the selling price out of it. So we have linear regression for it because since the selling price can uh, can be different for different people, it's. It depends. So it's a type of linear regression or regression problem. Linear means two plane axis. There are mul multiple uh, multiple regression also. It's it's a advanced concept. So coming back to unsupervised learning. So I just told you about supervised learning. Now I'm I'm coming to unsupervised learning. So unsupervised learning is basically you have to form clusters. What what kind of clusters? Let's say you guys are in college. You guys are in uh, office. You guys for, form groups, group of friends, group of colleagues, based on certain interests, right? Let's say I like ice cream, so I'll I'll hang out with you. Let's say you you don't like ice cream, you you might you might also hang out with me. But are uh, is just one reason enough for you to form groups? No, right? So it 
it's out of multiple reasons we have in our daily lives we form clusters or groups so one problem we have is cluster analysis but if you have heard about it we say pattern recognition let's say i want to decide the genre you are interested in genre of music so i would i, I can give you a recommendation system which would produce your uh, produce a set of songs for you recommended recommended based on your set of songs you are listening to i have i have a spotify for it and so yeah coming back so clustering is a type of problem where you don't have any y you know x and y we don't have any output defined we just have data points data points as in okay, so literature problem this is very good problem so as you all know uh, you guys and uh, myself are like you know stuck in at home attending this webinar this boring webinar i know it's very boring but trust me it it gets better if you stay a little more 10 at more than 10 minutes it will be interesting so let's say i have a data set description over here which would give you first some in information about covid pandemic and what are all the things you need to know about covid so yeah you have a list of indexes and a list of uh, paragraph mentioned over here which can tell you many things about what kind of groups what kind of lies what kind of um, rumors are being spread about covid it was a, a really good fake news yeah so here is a really good research paper on like fake news which is generated about covid like you know drinking cow piss not having vaccine uh, doing this doing yoga and all that it's really very hard to just say that, say it but the world has suffered a lot so is a really nice research to learn what's what's about what the scientist has done to to analyze categorize clusters of fake news or, or some genuine news on covid-19 so i'll i'll give a uh, link to that so this is a distinction between supervised and unsupervised learning so let's say have you heard about an ai which is able to generate picture uh, videos from your loved ones which are no more with us many people on social media have been posting videos which are generated by machine learning problem some some face swap algorithms which which are used to get to swap images faces and certain body types let's say your muscles they're changing it and you know modifying their beauty but there are really many apps for it let's uh, let's take example of snapchat snapchat using much unsupervised learning to to detect your faces it uses open cv heavily heavy 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 contribution to open cv libraries snapchat so what snapchat is using is it it takes har cascades of your faces it has its set of implementation on machine and uh, machine learning let's say c++ libraries and it is uh, whenever you open a camera it it is taking your your facial recognition and generating a filter let's say your dog filter the famous dog filter it's really available online by this article i wanted to show you how they have generated a filter out of it uh, guys just a second give me 5 more minutes i'll i'll show you what uh, what i wanted to show you and then i'll take a qa session with you all so yeah so facial landmark is nothing but yeah these are all examples of your machine learning algorithms generated using apis of certain open source uh, contributions by scientists much programmers machine learning engineers data scientists so i can walk i'll give you the code base for this you you guys should really have a practice of uh, reading from other code i do it I, i do it a lot i have to give uh, citations for f for every uh, code i i take reference from because in corporate we we just can't take someone's code and not uh, acknowledge them it, we have certain frameworks so yeah so yeah coming back to cl uh, clustering problem oh sorry unsupervised problem we have clustering so i just showed you what what clustering is in that problem the camera feed had to determine what part of uh, face would be best suited to you know place the ears and you know tongue of the dog for that filter it's a kind of unsupervised problem generate images or generate videos we have really much very much done wonders in this area and we are still doing it we have gans generate generated as a serial network literally train music based on some uh, some input let's say you like the dj snake i like dj snake 
you have different set of likings for some songs of DJ Snake. I have, you, I have different songs. But can I generate a, a recommendation based on a liking and have a model for it? Yes, I can. That's why we have recommendation systems installed in almost every social media account. Let's say I'll show you my Amazon. I have what kind of recommendations like I'm getting maybe. Okay, I have a prime subscription. Okay, I just bought a phone from my mom. So yeah, I'm getting phone. So I just bought a earphones from my brother. So I'm getting certain different. So yeah, these are all the set of books I are being recommended. Some uh, uh, recommendations for festivals which are coming, maybe Navaratra, Dashera. Yeah, things like that. Which means, yeah. And they have really a nice catalog of things. And if you say, give me something. Okay. So I'll show you uh, something in the product section and you know, uh, you can find this by yourself. Okay. Comprehensive treatment of whole garnet of ML. Okay. And it is getting five stars. It is also having five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars, yeah. three stars. And yeah, it must be very recent. So yeah, it is around that. So five stars, five stars. Maybe there, there may be some one star or maybe two stars. Yeah. See, so, you know, these guys uh, from Amazon data science team have really worked hard in the field called natural language processing to, you know, generate emotions out of each review, which is written on amazon.in about this book. It's a really nice book. I have it. So, yeah. So since finally, you can read it. So, you know, there might be some, something, you know, which they have decided to, you know, give it the best review to, you know, be pinned on the screen. Let's say this one, if you are a practitioner of machine learning, I'll, I'll suggest you to buy this book. Okay. This is a really nice compliment of machine learning book, which is being, being, uh, being shown there. So the author doesn't go deep theory behind the idea. Okay. It should be yeah, And it has really good. Uh, set of examples out of data which we are having so i would give a thumbs up for this book and yeah so you know what i wanted to show you out of this is like you know the team behind the marketing team has has asked you know machine learning engineers from amazon to to classify the reviews which are given by the customers who let's say the, this book so based on that they have ranked they ranked it you know Okay, I'll see the, the minus one, really. pathetic packing. Yeah. So they decided not to, not to show it to the customer just to show show the good reviews. The inner pages are good, but the cover binding is torn. So I stick with the have a tape. So the customer pays 2000 for a book. They could not stand it. Quality printing product. Yeah. Okay. Book is not in good condition requested for a replacement. Yeah. I'm unable to understand this book. Okay. Not my problem. So based on this, they have really sorted out all the reviews. They have made a really wonderful web app based on libraries, like machine, uh, like based on uh, using libraries from Python, Java, C++, maybe Golang, React. And for the, uh, for the mobile app, they have, they must have used React Native or maybe Android or Flutter if they are working on new technology or it's it's based on the requirement. So yeah, it's a kind of a clustering problem you are seeing. And how are you able to, you know, decide the emotion? We have an area in machine learning called natural language processing, where we study human linguistic, which are used in artificial intelligence. So let's say I am trying my best to, you know, be a good uh, coach towards uh, to, in this webinar. So I don't know how you are going to judge me, but uh, based on my linguistics only, you're going to give me an emotion towards you. Like how was I, to, uh, how was my attitude towards you? Correct. So based on that, uh, psychology, uh, scientists of machine learning thought of going for an area, especially for the uh, linguistics la language. Let's say I am speaking in English. You are speaking in Hindi, Tamil, Telugu, Bengali, various languages of the world. Okay. But I, uh, you are able to communicate in English. That's the common parameter we have. And based on that, we have our translators defined. Let's say I'm using Google Translate to communicate with someone over text. Using, let's say I want to communicate with a Chinese guy. I'll have, I'll have a Google Translator from, for English to Chinese. 
hello. It would say ni hao, yeah, because I knew it. So, how are you? Ni hao ma. So, it's a really interesting field to explore. It's a category of we have really various algorithms such as part of speech uh, speech to text text to uh, machine translation question answering news gathering text categorization all such fields are there in natural language processing so it's a really nice area to uh, look for so now coming back uh, coming to a new area of ml reinforcement learning so i guess everyone here or not if not everyone must have heard about tesla so what tesla is uh, tesla is a billion dollar company which is which which is working on self driving cars in the us and the canada and and i guess some parts of uh, europe maybe so they have used reinforcement learning which which is a kind of reward and punishment algorithm let's say uh, i have a dog and whenever he pees on my hoof or my bed i'll 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 scold him right and whenever he you know fetches the newspaper i'll give him a reward let's say a cookie or a biscuit so that's a kind of a reward and punishment action based on the environment, environment is my home indian is my dog i give him a reward whenever he you know i'm training him for to, to sit and stand so based on that uh, intuition we have self driving cars it has to be trained a lot a lot i mean it's it would be very difficult to have have them in india but yeah elon musk is trying hard to maybe work on them his company is really say working on them pretty much uh, not any other company is working on self driving cars uh, google brain is also working and uber is like uh, also working on self driving car domain what i meant by self driving uh, reinforcement learning is it's a kind of reward and punishment to an intelligent agent so let's say you 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 can find like in 2016 the google assistant was not as accurate as it is right now at least i tried to analyze it you can say you can think of like you know on push questioning google assistant how are you and all that he would reply as if it is a is it, it is an agent as if it is it is doing a good job and if not it would at the end of the session it would ask for your opinion was i correct or was i wrong isn't it that's how we we have reinforcement learning models to in in the area such as game theory compu uh, computer theory operation research information theory uh, simulation based optimization multi agent system swarm etc so it's a kind of it's a type of learning which is there in machine learning so yeah now coming to neural networks so someone in i would say i'll check the name with uh, the pratap singh said it's neural network is a subset of deep learning which mimics the brain operation yeah correct so yeah i'll i'll quickly show you what neural network is and how it is related to your brain so let's say this is a really small example of a of a protestron let's say the first neural network which was it has which was thought of so we have a input layer a hidden layer and output so let's say i take uh, take my two, uh, index finger and the thumb and i i pinch myself in on my other hand i'll get an imp impulse in my spinal cord and my brain that i am i'm feeling some pain a little bit of pinch if i keep pressing it i might it might get harder so it's it's getting an impulse from uh, from my brain uh, from my from my fingers to my to my hand and the environment is my body so we have we have uh, millions of uh, new uh, neurons in my brain in in a brain there are really types of regions areas of brain inside a body inside every person you no know, everyone has similar brain so yeah they all function almost the same and yeah so we have a really good amount of implementation going on in neural networks we have different types of neural networks artificial neural networks convolution neural networks recurrent neural networks gans and uh, maybe auto encoders and yeah that would be in a first start but all the neural networks have one thing in common they are inspired from brain input layer output layer uh, and a hidden layer and we have a back propagation algorithm which would 
yeah this is good enough for a back propagation explanation so let's say i take a input from here and here let's say now i am pressing my fingers at two places on my hand i'll get uh, using two fingers i'm pressing my hand i'll get input from two two features so my uh, my nerves will get you know get transmitted to to my brain and then it will it will have a back propagation let's say it goes from here and it goes to here 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 and it reaches my brain and then it comes back comes back and gives me an impulse back and now let's say i i literally twisted my finger position to some other fingers okay it it would it would go over here it would go here reach the same state using some different path it's a kind of graph you can analyze it as a graph and we have a distance methods based on parameters let's say yeah so yeah so that is the biological inspiration of the brain behind the neural network so yeah this also so i'm getting thoughts i'm getting uh, clicks i'm getting all the inputs so i'm able to process something in my brain based on some intuition or maybe understanding natural language understanding so yeah that's how what that is what the intuition behind a neural network is so given the time constraint i am only telling what is an artificial neural network because it was the first uh, neural network which was suggested i think you must have uh, in your heard in these terms about in your biology synapses neurons artificial uh, neurons and dendrites which are all part of our body so it's related to that and so yeah before jumping to neural networks i would like to show you about a man who interviewed so i guess you must have seen a movie the imitation games yeah so imitation game is actually real you know and this this is the man who is actually who actually helped uh, the countries who were part of the world war 2 and save save its save it from the germany so he, this man this decided to go for a machine known as turing test which would train which would have a training and a, a person will be actually sitting with the machine and would, would decide if the machine is a person or a, a machine based on some test so that's that's what turing test is and so yeah uh, that's the uh, first i would say inspiration behind uh, neural networks yeah it's it it's uh, it's defined in supervised or unsupervised domain and, and also in uh, reinforcement learning agents so we have a model called perceptron perceptron was the first neural network which was uh, generated uh, yeah it's following based uh, it has certain parameters of weight x1 x2 xn and then it is all taking the sum along with the bias and it has a activation function and this is a tan h yeah it's a tan h i guess yeah it's a activation function and and then it's generating a output based on the fun activation function and the summation so this is what, this is what like you know inspired the other neural networks to inspire from let's say we have a image net this is a data set which is which is having millions of pictures it is very huge and and it was being used as a competition before yan li cam the famous scientist at facebook generated convolution neural network idea yan li cam so this this guy is the idea uh, is the uh, is the person who is behind many research papers on computational mobile robotics and neuroscience all included in machine learning and we have we have generative adversarial networks so it's a kind of neural network which is which is used to generate something out of some given data let's say i want to generate of images yeah. let's say i want to generate a video based on some given images i can do that i have trained this but training a gan is very hard and it's still under very much uh, highlight so i would say it's a really good area to look upon so now i think uh, yeah i would end my session with the last neural network cnn convolution neural network so i showed you how to, how you can work with numbers how you can work with uh, data points how you can work with uh, videos i didn't show you but i told you how at least so we have convolution neural networks to look for images and video and 
and more. Like let's say you can even work with uh, music uh, audio data sets using convolution neural network. We have an import of images, a set of import of images, and we have layers. The layers are similar to what we have in artificial neural network, but it's more generalized to a specific use case. We have an input layer. We have a convolution layer. Convolution layer is generating uh, values out of a given image. And you can read about it. We have pooling, convolution, ReLU, pooling, flattened, connected, soft Mac regression, all those just to generate a classification uh, output. Let's say I want to classify between top, it's a good data set. So based on certain uh, given images, I can determine what, what is the image of a dog and what is the image of a cat. So dog, yeah. So what you can do is you can name, name certain images of dogs as class one and for cat class zero. So yeah, and based on certain uh, features, let's say eyes, colors, ears, faces, number of paws, uh, images of paws, etc. And you can generate value out of it value in a in a form of a matrix which you can use in features and you can train a neural network so yeah so we have convolution neural network or artificial neural network to cover that but yeah convolution neural network are limited to various use case, use cases and artificial neural networks are the biological inspiration of brain so we have to learn about artificial neural network before jumping to convolution neural network and let's say if I want to, uh, so let's say I told you about uh, natural language processing. So now you want to work on, um, let's say, work on your own uh, speech to text or text to speech conversion, or maybe have an index for, uh, for, a, for a dictionary. You can, you want to, uh, you are fed up of using the machine learning problems because you want you want to study uh, neural networks based on on text. So I would go for recurrent neural networks, which works upon uh, textual data, textual as in the words of the language I'm speaking. I can work on Sanskrit, Hindi, Marathi, Tamil, Telugu, all these languages based on the data I'm providing it to the, uh, to the uh, algorithm. And we have various parameters, which you know I couldn't cover in this webinar, but you know I would advise you to go through them using courses. There are really many courses which I have done over a span of six years from the first year of my engineering. And like, yeah, I used to work in teams in my colleges. So yeah, I can say I know about them, but yeah, I would I would still not be say, I, I, I would still not say that I am an expert in them. So it's a friendly uh, area of research. If you want to go for MS, maybe in future, you can go with machine learning for MS using, using exam, exam, giving examinations such as GRE, TOEFL, IELTS, GATE. Yeah. You have to go for either machine, uh, masters in machine learning or masters in data science or artificial intelligence. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll end my session. I, I'll look for Q, uh, QA now. I would expect some questions in the uh, direct to direct or maybe on chat. So someone is asking how many experience so you have. I have two years of uh, professional experience and before that I was involved in machine learning uh, in, thing, in college labs. Let's say we have a Nextic Labs, SRM, AUV, all that. So yeah, I have always uh, tried to be engaged in some activities on machine learning EC course subjects. No, it's not linked to any EC course subjects. Uh, all you need to do all you need to know for learning machine learning is basic understanding of linear algebra, matrix, determinants, some some vector algebra, some area of the planes, some concepts of vectors, calculus, and yeah, in uh, programming aspects, you can start with Python. All the resources available on internet are free, and you can really master yourself in machine learning if you give yourself give yourself time to learn python to learn to learn from research papers to learn from wikipedia all the sources which are there you can get on machine learning so yeah i think uh, any more sub questions what is the relationship yeah, between yeah uh, yeah uh, you're saying something yeah there was some question that was there. yeah okay uh, what is the relationship between ai ml deep learning neural networks describing brief okay so you know let's say 
what is uh, i would describe machine learning as the as a set okay set of problems a set of np hard problems you know what np hard problem is np hard problem is a is a is a subset of problems which which are hard to define and hard to get a solution out of it there if you are able to crack any optimized and you know best solution in a linear time in any uh, np hard problem you can get a turing award or maybe any award in computer science not a nobel prize of course because uh, computer scientists don't get a nobel prize so yeah uh, it's a basic uh, the basics of uh, artificial intelligence starts from machine learning and then moving on to a new set deep learning deep learning is a superset of machine learning using neural networks deep learning is nothing but a application of machine learning using neural networks and coming to artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence is nothing but your common application which you use daily your phone is the biggest uh, uh, example of artificial intelligence you can literally order uh, food using your voice just you have to uh, command okay google do this do this you can do it that's a that's a combination of really you know huge amount of code base you have to generate you have to generate models let's say for this task you have to use classification for some task you have to use regression for some task you have to use clustering for some understanding you might have to use nlp so artificial intelligence is the is the whole package of uh, machine learning area but the basic starts from statistics i would say because machine learning is nothing more than a statistics i can build a model using average median mode Algorithm uh, formulas based on the parameters I'm getting. I can. I just have to have to know what what has to be done. So yeah. Any more questions? And yeah, you need to know uh, a very uh, not very good, uh, but you know the basic concepts of uh, mathematics. It's not hard. Everything is available online. You, it's not a test like you know you have to be good in studies to be a good machine learning engineer. No, you just need to have a good mindset, a good problem solving skill towards. You need to think intuitively. You'll think intuitively once once you once you are into machine learning. I can guarantee that. So will you? Yeah, I'll I'll share the PPT. I'll I'll actually work with all the resources I can give you to you know start with machine learning problems. With uh, from where you can actually get the data set to practice machine learning uh, problems, to practice uh, Python, to to get the uh, tools you need, such as Jupyter Notebook, VS Code. I'll give you all that. Thanks, Ishan. Thank you. Thank you for attending the session. Well, I think there there are no more questions. So thank you, yeah. well, for giving such a great insight on the topic of machine learning thank and you. neural network. It was co- yeah. cross mixing of neural network and machine learning every time. So I, yeah. actually, that was good. We really appreciate yeah. that you took your time to give this knowledgeable session. Also, participant would be really got something new to learn today. Yeah, thank actually, you very yes. much, Trevor. Thank you. I am sorry if I'm not able and, to give you any PPTs yeah. for now. Uh, uh, it, I'll just take uh, around time for the night. I'll give all of you PPTs. Yeah, just just Some do send me a mail really. and uh, yeah. Okay, and yeah. participants can mail me at webinar at the rate vozier dot com if they want it. So I actually I would be sharing it with them there only. nice participant and also i want to convey the message to the participants that we would be having another session next weekend so hope to see you all there okay take care bye 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 guys thank you